Tony, what's your, your take on, I mean, you were at a lot of these uh, talks this afternoon. Was there something new that we learned from that, the confirmation that the balance sheet runoff should be done or paused at least by the end of this year? Was, was that, in, was that a, a sort of new piece of information? It wasn't new, and I saw my former colleague, Rich Clowder, there, and it didn't seem like anything new was said. It was just a reinforcement. It seems at the Fed there were a lot of so-called doubting Thomases now about uh, old theories about the, the relationship between growth and inflation. Since 1958, when the so-called Phillips curve was introduced, the idea that stronger growth would lead to inflation, economists have believed that eventually it would. But now they're doubting it, citing Japan, for example, big efforts to try to push the inflation rate above its target, but not having any result at whatsoever. So the Federal Reserve is looking prudently at the future, what it could do if the economy were to slow down, and what it could do to raise the inflation rate, because it's better to have an inflation rate that's more stable near 2% than a much lower one. Is it possible that the framework or, or the way it's being framed um, is the thing that does really need to be reviewed? I mean, I think if you go out, you go on Main Street America and you ask them if they're paying more for goods, you know, they're sort of paying more at Whole Foods, paying more for diapers, you know, across the board more for health care, rents, et cetera, they're going to tell you that they are feeling like inflation is alive and real, even if the data currently that the Fed is assessing doesn't say it. Right, especially in big cities, because there does tend to be more, a higher inflation rate in cities than in rural areas. And so a lot of these surveys that tend to be done there. And the inflation rate, there is, there are higher prices. It's just that they're not as high as the Fed and central banks would like them. So the Fed is prudently looking at what it could do if, if it had to push its policy rate down to zero, because we're so close to it now. Near two, at two and a half, it's about half of where it would normally be in a tight monetary policy situation. So it could more easily get back to zero. The Fed would face the question of, now what do we do about the economy to improve its prospects? Dave, uh, what, what's your view on where the Fed has got to already? I mean, on one level, it feels like they've made a big pivot and the market's priced that in. But on another level, they, they do have plenty of room to cut if necessary. Well, I, I think it sounds like, and I wasn't there today, it sounds like almost we're entering a new phase here. We've, we've done QE1, QE2, we've lowered rates, we've raised them up, and now they're saying, well, that's not working, there isn't any inflation, so now we should change the rules here. Uh, I, I, again, I think it... Today or the last couple of weeks, we're realizing that rates aren't going to go up, and that's a that's the Fed is just not going to allow that or, or doesn't see that because there isn't any inflation. There has been some slowdown, and now they're talking about adding more stuff to the toolkit. Right? They want to do this. They want to do that. So, you know, my, my big kind of you know tongue in cheek is, well, what's the next thing? And they're going to buy equities to get the market up so we have inflation. So again, they, they do it in Japan. They do it in you know in other other central banks. So. I mean, it's almost like they're setting us up to say, look, we need a much higher market and a much stronger economy to get inflation, and we're going to help you do that. And they're telling you that now, that they're not going to you know, be anything but accommodative going forward. Dave, spinning forward, what are you watching out for next week, most of all? Well, J.P. Morgan has their investor conference on Tuesday, uh, and I think that's a, a significant... To me, it's going to be sniffing what they say, not about margins or credit. It's going to be about what they're, what they're investing in and how they view what the company looks like the next five years. And to me, it's sort of the future here. It's not the, the immediate you know, next 12 months.